Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of MotoGP 21 Career Mode. In today's episode, we have our home race for our team. We are off to Mugello for one of the best races of the season. But first up, we have some bike development for my Moto2 team. Now, the question is, do I have to go electronics or engine? It's a bit more expensive for engines. I actually don't think I have really anything do i want to do any of this so i reckon i'm going to engine braking just to get the bike a bit more cooperative we don't have enough to do anything else for now but we should do after the catalonia tests and in team development we have things across the board now in the motor 3 we have two brackets left over we have financial finances these are only team prestiges we are already max team prestige you see there so we're actually not going to waste our money on that but i am going to go ahead and do this plus one percent reliability the bottom one is uh, resources like a development boost but we already have a fully developed handler so we don't need that either so that is all the tidy work done let's jump into Magello. so i'm after making a huge mistake you might notice that is q1 and i am not true i had set a lap i thought it was quick enough i was 0.8 quicker than anyone with about four or five minutes left and i went back to the pits ended the session and valentino rossi has pit me by 10 and a half into Q2, his home race, and he's gone and pushed me out. So here we are for the race, and after a huge blunder in qualifying, we are way further down than I'd want to be. We've gone with the recommended tires, medium front, hard rear. I'm not too sure about the hard rear, but that's what recommended. So, I, oh, I was so devastated when I spent, hit end session, I came off that I was in 13th. Oh, I was disgusted. But uh, fair play to that man there, 41 years old Rossi, who managed to pit me at his own race to get into Q2. So, of all people who could have done it to me, he's the least I'd be angry at. So, fair play to Rossi. I was actually quite happy it was him he that made it through. But in it, we have work to do here today, unfortunately. You can see us somewhere in the back there behind Marcus. So, we look at all them we have to make up. So, it's imperative we get a good launch. Five red lights and we are off and it looks like... For once, it is a good start. And we are up into the top seven, maybe top five, if I can just slide under mirror. And that is a brilliant start at Magello. Of all places you want to do it, it is Magello. And we are into the top four by the end of sector one. So that is nine positions in only a handful of corners. We have a look with Fabio, but we just got a bit too tight to him. Now, most of the front guys are on hard rear tyres, so we all have the same rear. Which is interesting to see, just for later in the race. But usually these colder conditions, they like to kind of go a bit cold, so I am sceptical of it. I think it will wear quite quickly, and the pace won't be that high in the race. It all depends on if the AI can manage to do something special with it, like they can do in times. A lot of times the AI just don't seem to get affected by the actual real life temperatures. Like the player would. We've got a lot of rear end moving from the hard rear already, only after lapping. Look how worn it is on the right side. I reckon it's going to be a big issue for me. Probably not for the AI as much. I didn't go off the track there. That was a bullshit warning. That's going to be second. I got away of that one because I got one in qualifying for doing that. So I'm going to just turn tight. Not to do the strongest thing to do, but we'll manage to do it quite well there. Up into P3 we go into Catty. 1, 2, 3 at Magello. Look at Bagnaya. Has a look at Miller. Our goal here is to get to the front and see can we check out. We've had a fantastic opening lap. Best opening lap all year, and we have a huge moment into two there. Front was on the move, had to pick it up a touch. Another track down this morning. Not again. Not another Le Mans. I just lack a small bit of precision at the moment with this bike. 
freaking not upgrading the chassis will affect it like that. And the two Ducats in the front are pulling on me, which is a bit worrying. Or a much better air through our Beata too. Miller is holding his own at the front. Just pulling a small gap over Fabio. Nothing huge as of yet. That's a third track limits warning. We are in trouble with this track limits bullshit. I actually don't even know where it is. It's actually in the Ducati corner, I think. The long lap is, yeah, it is actually now that I look on the mini map. Into the Cipriano Pekka we come. We're going to hit 200 miles now. What are we going to hit in top speed, boys? 220. And that is the lead. But Miller fights us back. A big bit of contact. And we are wide. 220 miles an hour. And we pass both of them for a split second. Going to hang it in on Pekka. It's not close enough again. Mistake on that curb. It's not where you want to be. I actually don't have much temperature in the rear, which is a bit annoying. We almost broke the uh, all-time speed record during GP. If we had a slightly better rear tire, if we had a medium on, I reckon I could have got off the corner a bit quicker, and that would have got me 223. I think is the current record by Zarco. Once again, that's a fort. The bike is an absolute ball through them corners. I cannot take speed through it. And we are one warning away now from getting a penalty. So it's imperative we get these boys this time around. Fastest lap goes to me. 218 that time around. But Miller again just pushes us wide on the braking. I presume Pekka's going to show us a wheel. Not exactly. He gets poor exit though. Not close enough. Again, we force him wide. We're going to try and cut back underneath him. Get him into turn four. Just get a wheelie. It's not where you want to wheelie. Into Maserati. We come turn five. Maybe can we get him down into the next right hander. Casanova and Savelli, not on like a move from here, but too far back at the moment. And there's another Ducati there, wants to take my position back. We've seen pretty strong through the Arabiatas, Arabiata 1 and 2. It's drifting it up over the hill. Very hard to get close to Miller through the rest of the lap. They have serious pace. Take a very gingerly through here. And we still get the penalty. We touched the curb and that's a penalty. I do not believe it. That's twice we've touched that curb and got a penalty. So. Oh, what a nightmare. At least we have time left. Ah, jeez, another long lap warning. This has been a nightmare for this Ducati. But into the lead, this time we go, we need to give an absolute all-out lap here to get a bit of a gap to the boys behind. This is a qualifying lap, and that rear tyre is really letting me down. What can I do with free track, I wonder? Head down now, we're going to have to take this lap, and again, I'm quite worried about how hard it is to take. We're on the raggedy edge at the moment with this Ducati. A couple of corners left now to take. We're nearly a second under our delta, which is serious going. I 
Alright, last corner. Now up into this corner to take it. That's it done. That actually wasn't too bad. Now we'll come out just behind him. Now we have plenty of warnings to go, so we can kind of use the track to our advantage just to get back with them. Oh my god, huge moment. We bounced off the inside curb there. And again, spinning up in the curb, we're making so many mistakes, we're completely overriding this Ducati. Again, if we can get clear track, it looks like we have to pace all of them. It's just behind them. We can't make the bike do what we want. Ah, oh, Christ, again. Like, come on. This penultimate lap right there. We just need to get another lap out of it. We have two more warning. We have one more warning before we get a penalty then. This bike is all over the place. Of all tracks you want to act up, it's at home. Of course it is. We've yet to have a clean race with this Ducati, I found. So far we've had such a difficult weekend, nearly every weekend. We've had good results, we've managed to pull it out of the bag, but we've yet to have a weekend where we've just had plain sailing. Down into Scarpria we come for the penultimate time. Good exit though. We're gonna just hang on to that extra fuel if we can. I actually need it. Fast slap to the race to me. Into the lead we go for now. This is like Magello 2019 all over again, except it's a set of Marcus, it's three Ducatis. Now one lap, we've we have one warning in hand if we have to use it, if we make a mistake. Heck goes ahead of Miller. I think Miller is probably the quicker of the two. I'm going to take a very slow lap here just to make sure we get it to the, the line without getting a penalty. I can battle them if they need be, but I'm going to make sure this lap, unlike Le Mans, we don't get another penalty. That's the first half of the lap done. That's the easy part done. Now we come into our Beata 2. Just careful on the exit. Oh, we get deep in there. That's not what you want. Front is not in a good state. I'm going to have to be very careful. Oh, we're a bit wide there. They haven't shown us a wheel yet, though. So gingerly through there, and it's still. I got away with them big time there. Final corner time, I'm gonna park it on the apex. Thankfully, didn't bounce off the curb that time. How's the exit? It's pretty good, they're a bit too far back. That should be it, that should be a home race victory. And it is, get in. That was a tough one. Winning in front of the Magello fans, their beloved Italian Ducati is on the top step, and we get the fast lap. So that was an incredible race. So painful to get eight warnings in as many laps. I don't know what was going on with that bike, but it was just all over the place. It was so difficult to ride. And obviously it was quick as well because the top three men were all on the exact same bike. But um, yeah, that was, geez, that was a tough race. Where did everyone else come on? So, Alate on the Aprilia, another Ducat or another Italian bike, comes on P5, so fabulous result for him. Zarco, 9th, 10th for Argamartine, so that's 5 Ducatis in the top 10. Unfortunately, Rossi down 18th, he did go with a soft rear, so not surprising. And Davi and Marini all at the back, so unfortunately, not a great day for the Italian riders. P2 for one of them, and uh, the next one was Jesus Dozen, one in the top 10, so. Bassanini in 15, so most of them outside it, but for to do Catties, what a brilliant day, and that gives us the championship lead back. Now, I really want to push on from here. This was a brilliant race. I showed that I have the pace over my teammates. I just need to 
get it out of the box a bit more early on in the race because uh, most races have had early race pace issues and it's towards the end of the race a bit like Qatar 1 and 2 I was the fastest man on track at the end but couldn't make anything of it and same Le Mans with the penalty that should have been a win so we have thrown away a good few race wins this season so far but the uh, team's championship is almost done already we're 150 points clear and the constructors probably up at 50 yeah it's up at 49 so we again we nearly have two race victories worked over Yamaha so we're having a great time as a team but I just need to improve slightly my rating again a couple more upgrades on this bike and I think we should be favorite for the title so a brilliant result for dom in p7 after qualifying 13 so he ends up with our first top seven at Mugello. brilliant track and a brilliant performance so all the upgrades do look to be improving dom quite quickly again unfortunately carmona had a difficult race qualified 19 drop back to 23rd let's see how the motor look at that qualified second for Zal comes home with the race victory he is absolutely wiping the floor. Hernandez again, decent qualifying and comes home in a respectable P5. So we are well on the way to our first Constructors title in Motor 3 with the two boys. They are doing great. Now, next episode, we are off to the lovely Catalonia Grand Prix in Barcelona in Montemelo. So another good track for Ducati over the years. They have been quite strong there. So I do hope that we can be on the pace from the get-go there. But anyway... Oh, I actually have another upgrade just before we end it off. So we have another upgrade to go on. So it's already gone on. So we have another one to start. Now, I will leave this till the next episode and I'll build on another one as we start the next episode. But I just want to thank you all for the support on the videos. They've been blowing up recently and just happy new year to everyone. And thank you all once again for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.